Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are working our way through the Gospel of John, specifically looking at I Am. Jesus firmly establishes his identity, that he is the Son of God, and he has come to seek and save the lost, to be a willing sacrifice so that we might come into right relationship with God. He has shared these things over and over and over. And yet we get to the very end of his ministry, within hours of his arrest, and those that are closest to him, his disciples, are still have, <laughs> still have a lot of questions. So let's look at John 14, 5. So to set the stage, Jesus is just kind of out of a desire to comfort because he knows his time is near. He's like, don't worry, guys. Yes, I'm going away, but I'm going away and I'm going to prepare a place for you. You know my father. You know he has a, a, a spot just for you. And then we get this from Thomas. No, we don't know, Lord. Thomas said, we have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus believes that he is just speaking words of comfort and yet finds himself having to go back and create the foundation of salvation for those that have been traveling with him for three years, who have witnessed miracle after miracle after miracle. This is a beautiful I am statement and is one that we, that God has created so that we have uh, this this concise statement of who Jesus is. And it is one that is, is used often to explain the gift of salvation and the special relationship between Jesus and God the Father. Well, maybe it's just Thomas. or maybe it's larger. In eight, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. So our focus as we began exploring the Gospel of John is this beautiful relationship that developed between John and Jesus, the Son of God, and the respect and the reverence he has for him, and the aspect of the relationship between John and Jesus, the Messiah, the man. While that relationship is developing, while John is spending every moment he can just pressing in and and recording all of the things that Jesus is speaking, there are others, at least two others, Thomas and Philip, and I would argue perhaps even more of the disciples because they feel bold enough to say, we don't know, as if they're around a campfire after Jesus goes off to pray and are like, do you have any idea what he was talking about today? 
So we know that John, we have evidence here in the gospel, we, we have evidence through the other gospel message as well that, that Peter really wanted to, to get his hands on what Jesus was sharing. And it's likely James as well, John's brother, who were, he too was invited to, the, uh, to see Jesus transformed into all his glory. So the question we have, and as we perhaps skeptically kind of shake our head at these, this rabble that has been uh, following Christ for three years and doesn't seem to get it, how, how could they? But careful, for they may turn and look at you Say, you have been following Christ for much longer than we did. How's your relationship with God? Do you truly understand who Jesus is? You see, the same thing that they struggle with, we struggle with. Church becomes a social event. It becomes our fellowship it's a, a feel-good moment for us each week. We get to see the same faces, and they are happy to see us. And the music is calming. And the pastor's words are, are soothing and, and encouraging. What a great atmosphere. Wholesome. We can go a lifetime enjoying the atmosphere that God creates on a Sunday without ever taking the next step to truly know Jesus. Philip and Thomas and any of the others that just aren't getting it are purposed so that we might look at them and say, have I traveled all this way with Jesus and yet, I don't truly understand who he is. I don't really understand what he accomplished on the cross. I don't really understand why he needed to sacrifice himself. Philip and Thomas are our warning as we get to the end of the Gospels to check ourselves, to check our hearts, to make sure that we are working on our relationship with God and not just enjoying the potluck suppers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your sanctuary. We thank you, Lord, for for the laughter and the smiles and the, the encouragement that we experience when we gather together. Lord, I ask that you would challenge our hearts today. As we receive this message, Lord, let it sink in that it's more than just enjoying fellowship that we have been called to. How heartbreaking for us to get to the end of our days only to be told that we never really understood who you were. Even more heart-wrenching for you to look upon us and say, I don't know who you are. Lord, we desire to be one with you as you are one with the Father. We desire to know you and to be known. Draw us in today, Lord. Break us free from the, the social engagement. 
to a much deeper engagement. It is time for, for us to mature in our relationship with you, to make room for those that are just coming in. Help us to be more like John and James and Peter than Philip and Thomas. For your glory and your honor, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I think we got one more in the hopper. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, know that I love you and I miss you. And please be good.